Greetings, I'm in Goulburn at the Goulburn Racetrack. We're about an hour north of Canberra and I'm going to show you how I bet on the Greyhounds on autopilot. So here we are inside the Goldburn Greyhound track. You can see the track just behind me there. Why am I here if it's an automated system? Well, I don't have to be. The software to do this is actually all running on a computer at home, but it's fun to come and see the Greyhounds run. You certainly get a better feel for the atmosphere coming to the track than just watching it on TV. And well, with an automated system, you know, the system's placing the bets, but it's always good to be able to see the runners in action and see the bets come to fruition. So. We'll go through how the systems are working. Uh, I'll show you some of the software that's uh, being used to make it all run. And uh, then we'll have a look at it in action through a few races. Now, first thing is that uh, it is an automated system. I'm using two bits of software for this. One uh, is called Lay Bot. It's working on a Lay Pro system, which I'll, I'll go in a, into in a minute for staking. The other one is a Stop at a Winner. Uh, staking system in the Stop at a Winner Greyhound spot, the name kind of says it all. Now, there are some other meetings going on today, uh, a few others, as is usual, there's more than just this. The systems are betting on all of the races if the bets are in fact qualifying for those races. So we've got Heelsville in Victoria, Murray Bridge in South Australia, uh, Addington in New Zealand, there's a few others this afternoon as well. So the staking that we'll see through the day here at Goulburn won't necessarily reflect some of the previous results at Goulburn because it will be based to an extent on what's happening at the other tracks as well. The first system, as I mentioned, actually running two systems of uh, LayPro 88, now so-called because it needs about an 88% strike rate to, uh, to turn a profit. Sounds like a lot, but we're using Betfair for this and betting on dogs to lose the race. The other system is betting on them to win, but using Betfair here so we can bet on them to, to lose the race. So 88% isn't actually that hard to achieve. The first system is a uh, laying system on the fourth favorite. If that's paying between seven and $15, and if it's paying at least $2 more than the favorite. Uh, that strike rate on that's about 90.8%. So that's doing pretty well and certainly that, that generally turns a profit. The second system is laying the third favourite if it's paying odds of between six and fifteen dollars and is at least a dollar fifty more than the favourite. Strike rate on that is sitting at about 86 percent so it's not quite reaching the 88 but because it tends to get most of its runners in the uh, lower odds range it, it compensates for that it tends to do pretty well as well. And the other system is the stop at a winner system, in that we're actually backing the favorite in the race if the favorite is paying between three and five dollars. Strike rate on that, about 26.7%. So that's, uh, that's that's pretty good. Now I'll have uh, links to the software, so the Lay Gray bot and the stop at a winner bot uh, in the description below. Also, uh, all of this is on my blog, so there'll be a link to the blog as well. I'll show you the software in a minute. First, though, just to explain the staking system. So, the LayPro 88 system is betting on the dog to lose. So the odds that you get paid from it are fairly low. So we have to be pretty careful about how we go about uh, staking in that. So let's look at an example, which is the current um, uh, amount I'm using. Uh, so if we're laying 50 cents, so the stake is 50 cents on the first runner in the series. If that wins, that's great. We've won that 50 cents. Now, how to think about this if you're not familiar with lay betting, if you're familiar with back betting, you know, the stand back betting with Betfair or with the bookmaker or the TAB or whoever backing something to win. It's effectively the opposite of that. Uh, Betfair is a betting exchange. So when you bet on something, you're betting against other users. So if you are the person who's bet on the dog to win the race and you've bet 50 cents on it, and I'm betting on it to lose the race, um, and I'm, I'm taking your 50 cent bet effectively. So if the dog uh, wins the race, well, I have to pay you your winnings. Uh, if the dog loses the race, 
you can hear a race. That's probably at Addington. You can hear that on the on the audio in the background. Um, but uh, if if the dog loses the race, then I get your fifty cents. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the uh, so, so as I said, if it's uh, fifty cents, it wins great. I've won that fifty cents. Where that fifty cents is, uh, in fact, no, it's a practice run for some of the greyhounds behind me here. Um, fifty cents. Now, if the uh, if there's a loss, then we double the staking on the next one. Or well, technically, we're increasing the amount of the staking by whatever the initial stake was. So fifty cents goes up to a dollar. Now, say we win there, we can't. We bring it back down by one fifth of whatever the original stake was. So we're down to 90 cents for the next one. That wins, we come down to 80 cents for the next one. That wins, we come down to 70 cents. If that then loses, then we go up to $1.20 for the next one. Um, now we keep going through that cycle until we get back down to the 50 cents and we stay there until we have to start the cycle again because we've, we've, we've lost. The stop at a winner staking is a little bit different. Now for that, we're trying to make a profit of 50 cents per winning race. So let's have a look at say a, a, a runner at $3. If we want to win 50 cents on a runner that's $3, we would be putting 25 cents on it. Uh, if it wins, then we get 75 cents in total, which is our 25 cents back plus the 50 cents. On the other hand, if it loses, then our next bet, we want to get the 25 cents of our profit target plus that 25 cents that we originally staked. Now, if the next runner is paying $5, we're going to want a target of 75 cents, which means we need to put a stake on of 19 cents. That uh, gives us a total so far stake of 44 cents. Our outcome, if we win, is 95 cents there. Now, if that loses as well, then okay, we have to go up again. Um, we would going up to, let's say it's a $4 odds on the next runner. We would need a target of 94 cents to make up for our previous losses and to make our profit target. So we'd stake 76 cents. The outcome from that would be $1.28, which would be a profit of 52 cents. Now, great thing about Betfair, you can bet under a dollar, you can bet funny amounts, you know, as I had there, the 44 cents, the 76 cents, doesn't have to be round numbers, it just has to be a multiple of one cent. Um, you get it to some of the some, some of the the, the higher uh, well actually no it's it's the the odds that that can't be in just one cent there's there's specific odds uh, levels there so um, now there's also a commission on Betfair this is how they make their money they make a commission on anything you win because as I said you're not betting against Betfair you're betting against other Betfair users so they take a commission on whatever you win the stop at a winner. Uh, software calculates that commission so you don't have to do any of the strange maths and I, I haven't put it in the table it's a bit convoluted um, but you don't have to worry about that the, the system calculates the commission for you so you end up with that 50 cents after sorry yeah the 50 cents after commission so let's have a look at some of the software um, you can see I've got the laptop here um, so I'll just show you uh, I'll just show you here um, so this is the, we'll start with the stop of the winner uh, software. At the moment it's, it's still running since yesterday, in fact you can see down the side here we've got Addington and uh, Hillsville already underway today. Um, this has been running, I the last reset it yesterday, so we got $6.48 profit in a day, which is, which is reasonable, a 50 cents uh, profit target. Uh, you can see here I'm betting on the, the win market, on the first favourite, between three and five dollars as I said now here's the important bit um, betting 30 seconds before the race starts now why 30 seconds before the race starts that is a good question uh, the market tends to mature quite a lot just before the race you can really see where the money's moving you can see who people are backing what they think is likely to win what they think isn't likely to win what sort of chances they give it just based on the odds that form in the market as more money comes into it and a lot of it comes in really close to the race so 30 seconds before the advertised start time is where the bets are being placed for this system usually I, I adjust the, the system every few days I move it around by just a few seconds um, I just find that that people in the market uh, there's a lot of people doing automated betting in, in Betfair 
they tend to get um, sort of feel for what other people uh, may be doing with automated systems and they try to take advantage of that a little bit. So I find sometimes the effectiveness of right on 30 seconds drops off a little bit. So I move it around just a few seconds, which helps to keep that effectiveness as it should be. Um, now back to the software, you can see uh, I've got all of the settings here. Um, I've The tabs, it, it can run multiple races at once, so it can run one in tab one, another one in tab two, another one in tab three, etc. which is great if there's delays. I can see all of my results there. I can see what bets I've currently got placed there as well, so that's fine. Um, the lay grey bot, very similar. I've got the two strategies up, uh, fourth favourites in lay one, thirds in lay two. Results yesterday, not great, um, but uh, here, here's a graph from, um, from recent results. You can see it does go up and down a bit, but as long as it can maintain roughly that 88% or even 86%, uh, strike rate, it comes back pretty well pretty quickly. So um, a little bit of a down day yesterday. We'll see how today goes. Usually you get one down day and then yeah, a couple good days. So yeah, a bit of a, a roller coaster ride sometimes, but overall it does pretty well. Um, basically similar settings, similar interface. Um, and again, we can see all the tabs, etc. We're showing what's uh, happening where. So um, I'll show you the system as it's working through the day. So that's a quick look at the software. Let's go and have a look at the first race. So as you can see, the dogs are heading out to the boxes for the first race. So we will uh, we'll have a look at the system and see how it's going to place these bits. Now, we're just coming up to a minute and a half, a minute and a half out from the first race. So we'll have a quick look at the Betfair market. You can see what we're looking at here. There's a very clear favourite number two cup model sitting at about a dollar forty-five. Second favourite looks to be at the moment seven simple Sonic at eleven. Uh, we have. Uh, third and fourth favourites pretty close together at 12 and 13 each. Now, based on that, it's likely that we're going to see uh, the system to the lay bits on the third and fourth favourites. It's likely to not, well, it's not going to do a, a favourite bet because it won't be at least $3. So we'll have a look at the uh, system. And if we go into here, we'll just go into the current bets tabs. And obviously there's nothing here at the moment. Now we've got 10 seconds before we hit that 30 second mark. And then we'll see it starts to uh, place the bets. So we're at, uh, just coming up to it now. And it takes a few seconds for it to have a look at the market, decide what it's going to do. And you can see there we've got the two bets in the lay gray system. We've got a fourth favorite, five pajama royal. We've got a third favorite, seven simple sonic. It's managed to get the match to the market, so at 14, 15, and at 15. Now it's interesting, because they are so close together, uh, we've ended up with a what's actually a third favorite in the, oh, that is the third favorite system. I set these up at different times. Logically, you'd think thirds in there and fourths in, in system two, but I set them up at different times. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a stake of 210 on that one, 160 on that one. So we're looking at numbers, Five and seven. We'll have a quick look at the Betfair market again. You can see pretty much if five or seven lose, uh, win, it's not good for us. If they lose, then 370. It's not bad. So, you can see they're right over there at the boxes, and the race is about to start. So Lou is rolling. Good luck if you're playing at Goulburn. Race one, they're all set, ready. 
Racing to Nui away. OK, good pace. Mike Ville and Pam Jams Royal pushing through now. Cuff model. Oh, he was lucky to miss the regressing Saraville there. Uh, Errigal Aaron with a bit of a charge. It went to second. And to Nui followed it through. Around the corner, Pam Jams Royal and Errigal Aaron in the inside. Cuff model. She's got them. Cuff model drove through late. And cuff model from Pam Jams Royal. Errigal Aaron three. To Nui four. Next up was Lucky Lenniger. He's looking for further. Further back then to Mikeville, Sarahville, and Simple Sonic not sighted in 20 and 4. So there we go. A pretty clear cut result there. Two, five, eight, and one. So number two, the winner, that was the market said that. It was odds on very, very clearly it was going to be a uh, the winner. Well, not always. That's actually why we don't bet on the odds ons and the stop at a winner because that's staking. When you're under $2 on the, on the odds, it really takes off. So, uh, one of the good things about Betfair, we don't have to wait for, for TAB to consider an official result. Betfair, if it's a clear result, they, they result it straight away, you know, within seconds. Sometimes if I'm watching this on TV and the TV's a few seconds behind, I see the result in Betfair before I do on the TV. So, it's already cleared out of our... Um, results here if we into the results if we have a look you can see we won that dollar 60 we won that dollar 10 um, that helps in tab one so the next for the uh, fourth favorites will be 150 stake the next for the third favorites will be two dollar stake um, so that's certainly a, a good start helps to fix up some of the yesterday's not so good results and uh, just to just to show you you can see over here in the um, Betfair uh, settled tab, Betfair, you can see here, we won 210 there, we won the 160 there, so uh, good result all round. So that's the first race, we'll have a look at the next race. Okay, so we're just over a minute away from the next race. And <laughs> I uh, remembered to turn the screen recorder on this time, so you won't have to worry about me looking at the, shaking the camera around when we're trying to look at the screen. Let's have a look at the market for this next race. And again, we have a clear favourite in number two at a dollar fifty-six. There's a second favourite at eight forty. The third and fourth are way outside our range, so we're not going to get a bet on in this race. Um, let's have a look and, and see. The system's not going to do anything here. Um, Watch it go for the next 30 seconds, next few seconds. It's not going to do anything. As you can see, oh, no, hang on. It, uh, it thinks the third favorite's within range. Okay, I'm proven wrong, there you go. It thinks the third favorite's in range. It's got it at $14, so okay. So we're looking at number seven, Geordie, $14 uh, to not win, obviously. So, all right, have a quick look at the market. I can pull that up again quickly. So you can see we're looking to win 250 if Geordie does win. So that's, that's that. So that's number seven. So that's number seven there. So let's go and see the racing. We can see they're getting ready in the boxes over there. So let's see the race. 15th or 16th floor, uh, didn't manage to run into her, but uh, certainly very popular as they're all set here and so too is Rob, you're blind. He's at 150, needs to begin, set, ready, off. Rob, you're blind, second out, winning at daytime, Vera, and quickly to third, Ty Jack, Pam Jams, GG, deeper was Geordie, then Matapan, well back then, stunning sky. It's daytime, Vera, with a kick here. Geordie's up on the outside. There's no Rob, you're blind. Geordie goes to the lead. Rob, you're blind, can't get it. Geordie from Rob, you're blind. Third home, daytime, Vera, Pam Jams, GG, the stunning sky, Matapan, Ty Jack second last, and Julieville was last in 20 and 2. 6.56 for Sarah Hopkins at 10.40 and 2.80. 14.50 cross on uni tab, Rob you blind at 1.40 and daytime Vera at 3.70. So, number seven. Number seven. Well, that does happen sometimes. 
as I said in that uh, graph I showed you earlier, roller coaster ride. It usually comes out ahead. You do have to deal with some of these occasionally that don't go quite according to plan. So if we have a look, we can see number seven has been marked as the, uh, the winner and the, uh, the bot will have recorded that as a loss. It's a pretty steep loss, loss of 32.50. But, and so obviously the next stake in that system is going to be $3. But as I said, it, it, it generally comes back. So a loss here, and as I said, we're looking at, we're looking at an 86, 88% strike rate. So you will have these races that do this, but on the whole, they're usually better than this. <laughs> we'll see how the next race goes. Just an addendum to all of that, I uh, had a quick look back at that Betfair market screen in the video from uh, that, that race, and number seven was uh, at 13.50 when we first looked at it, and I, I just didn't see it. So um, this is one of the great things about the bots is that they don't make human mistakes. So if I'd been looking at the, the market, trying to work that out just before the race in those few seconds where everything's frantic and you're trying to work it out, I would have missed the race. Now this race just gone maybe it would have been a good race to miss but most of the races you'd want to be taking that runner so um no, you'd, you'd want to be laying that runner there so that's the great thing about the bots is that you don't have to be paying attention to the odds and the movements of the market it makes all of the bets all of the calculations automatically you don't have to be here you don't have to be watching the races paying any attention to them it's doing this when i'm here, it's doing this when I'm at work, it's doing this when I'm asleep, it's doing that when I'm playing with the dogs. So that's the really good thing about having an automated system. It doesn't make the mistakes that you will as a human, and it can do it when you can't. So I can have this running on Greyhound Racing all day, you know, from nine in the morning when New Zealand starts racing through until seven, eight in the morning when the UK finishes the next day. You know, you can almost get 24 hours of racing a day automatically. Okay, we're about a minute away from race three, so we'll have another look at the market. And we can see here, favorite at 193, so our, our favorite system is still not going to work here. Uh, not going to take anything. Second at 410, third at 940, so we'll, we'll definitely get this one on number four, Astro Lee. The fourth favorite sitting here at $15. The SP is out at 1750, so we probably won't get anything on there. Let's see the bot in action and see it uh, go to take it. So we're 30 seconds out from the race now. You can see it's just kicked into action. And there we go, it's, it's got uh, Astro Lee, number four. It's trying to get matched at the moment. So we'll just uh, give it a moment there, and there you go. It's managed to get matched at $11 with a stake of 290. So number four, Astro Lee is our runner here. And we can see here, uh, yeah, 290 if, if four loses the race, we lose 29 if it wins the race. But as I said, with the strike rate where it is, it's generally, generally a pretty good system overall. So we'll go and see the race because they're about to get started. You can see over there, they're at the boxes. So let's go and see the race. And up come the second rowers, including our favourite Super Luca at one seventy-five, three dollars fifty. Siska Roy, it'll get back, uh, but he'll be charging late. Ready to go, Goldman two. They're set. Ready. Racing. Siska Roy second last to go uh, with Super Luca. Super Luca's driving up now as Ice Cool Shelly leads and splitting that pair was Astro Lee. There followed Siska Roy, Notorious Creed. And the last few were uh, Astro, Notorious Outlaw, Rubyville. Coming to the corner, Astro Lee booted clear here. Uh, Super Luca's trying to pick it up, but Astro Lee's going to be too good for Super Luca. Third home was Siska Lucy, and they were followed home then by Siska Roy. Next up was Notorious. Creed and the last three into the pen Notorious Outlaw, Rubyville and Ice Cool Shelley after leading was last into the pen in 25-19 so we've got a 
Number four. So not really the result we wanted. Oh well, we'll go to the next race. So I might not be doing a great job right now of showing you how the system can make a profit, but hopefully we'll get there in some later races. But it is so far a really good example of why we don't bet the odds on runners on the stop at a winner stake. Now, I'll just put it up, put the graphic up there, and you can see how quickly the staking would have to increase if we had been betting on those odds on. It just blows out really quickly with losses. So you, that, that's why you just wouldn't want to do it. You, don't, you only need a couple of losses in a row to really be at uncomfortable levels with your staking and be potentially facing some really big losses. Whereas if we're doing the three to five dollar range, it's a 25-ish percent strike rate, but it's a much uh, much safer system. You can get 16, 17 losses in a row without really breaking a sweat. And then you get a winner somewhere in there, so you, know, you, you make a profit, you start again. The stop at a winner staking is, is good in that range. Now, these have been maiden races, you know, dogs that have never won a race before. So I don't know how anyone's picking really clear favourites out of them. They're obviously, apart from the first race, not doing a great job of picking uh, clear favourites because, I mean, they, you know, we're seeing these much higher odds runners end up winning. So it might be something you might want to look at is pulling the maidens out if you're betting on this system. Um, and that's something you can do in the software. At the bottom, you can select the races and the, the types of races you want to bet in. Maybe you pull out the Maidens. Well, it's certainly something I should probably look at to see if the Maidens might be dragging the system down overall. It's certainly a, a reasonable possibility considering they are dogs that have never won before. So it's a little hard to, to really declare clear favourites in them. So we're approaching the time for the next race um, and I just was uh, having a look at some of the results. You can actually see here that uh, Goulburn hasn't done so well for us so far lately but two race, uh, a race here at Healesville we just had a couple winners uh, in, in that race as well. A couple of horses bet on to lose that lost so we won $1.91 three forty there which helps to undo a bit of the damage. Um, on the stop at a winner system tab one yesterday last night by the looks of it actually met its profit target i've set a profit target per tab of five dollars just uh just to make it easier to to manage the system overall and work out when to when maybe to decide to um to uh look at revising staking or when it reaches certain targets so we're just coming up to uh, 30 seconds to the race, so we'll see what gets placed here now. And it looks like we're getting something in the lay system. It looks like we might be getting something in the in the stop at a winner system as well. So we're looking at number five, Danica Vella to lay at 8.40 with staking of $1.80. It's apparently the fourth favorite. Um, we're looking at the favourite to win number four, Hardaway Ranger, at $3.10. Stake there of 72 cents, so for us it's four against five. If we have a look at the market, we can see Hardaway Ranger there, we can see um, Danica Vella there. So first favourite, second favourite, third favourite, Felix Floyd, third favourite at 480 isn't over $6, hence the reason we didn't get anything back there. So for us we're looking at four to win, five to not win. Let's, uh, let's go and have a look at the race because they're at the boxes. Of a hundred thousand in prize money as they move across. Danica Vella, she's got early wheels as well, very well credentialed girl, 11 from 24 she needs to begin. And uh, Shapur out wide's got pace, has gone 1975 so really really good betting race. Non-grade one to four and they're just about set. Ready to go, Lilac City, Goulburn, race number four. Set, 
away. Felix Floyd out the back early and first to break out in the middle. Danica Vella joined by Enzo Herrera and Hardaway Ranger looking to get through as holding the lead Enzo Herrera. Now Redshift Delta went to second. Felix Floyd's out the back with Chaper. It's Enzo Herrera at the 50 metre pole is opening up late. Enzo Herrera from Redshift Delta, Hardaway Ranger and then Felix Floyd. Further back to Danica Vella and uh, Chaper. And on the clock, it's 19.7. For the two, Enzo Herrera, 3.10.170. Redshift Delta at a big price. A place 12.60, New South Wales tote. So, two, seven, four, and one. So the one that we wanted to win, number four, it ran third, which isn't great for us, but number five, which we wanted to not win, didn't win. Didn't even run in the top four. So, you yeah, know, good for us. We'll have a look at, uh, you can see a clear result. So it's already settled at Betfair. You know, how long you'd be waiting for the TAB to settle is a, is a good question. Um, so we can see here on number four, Hardway Ranger, we uh, we had a loss of 72 cents. You can see the staking is slowly increasing, but it's still, you know, tiny, tiny amounts. Over here, Danica Vella, not winning. That's a profit there of $1.80. So that, that helps to uh, recover things just a little. Now that's, that's also one of the benefits of the system is that you've got a lot of things happening. So you don't necessarily in a particular race need to have everything go your way in order for the race to be a winner. Uh, you know, over time, the various races doing various things that win certain strategies. You know, sometimes you get all, all the strategies going your way in the race. Often you'll get one or two things going your way and that's enough to slowly turn a profit. It's been reasonably sunny here. There's a bit of cloud about, but you see that cloud in the background there? See how dark that's starting to look? The rains are coming. And if we look at the weather radar, there's uh, some storm activity in that as well. So it'll be interesting to see if we get some delays as things go. The rain's not so much a problem, but the storm activity, the lightning, eh, we might get some delays. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. They're at the boxes, so we'll have a look at the market for this race. And you can see there's a favourite at 165, so we certainly won't have a bet on that one. Second favourite at 380, third favourite here 1150 AJ, number seven, so we'll probably be laying that one. The rest all way outside our range, so we won't be looking at those at all. So we'll um, we'll go over to the bots and we'll see what they're doing. We're still just over a minute away, so it'll be a, a little bit of time before we get there to, to see them uh, do their thing. That uh, weather, incidentally, is, is still approaching. You can actually see the rain getting closer over there. So we'll get this race away, but I've already heard some people talking about heading off before the storm hits. Should be interesting. Here we are 10 seconds away from our 30 seconds to the race mark where the system will start placing bets. So we can really ignore the stop at a winner on this one. We won't be getting a bet there. The lay pro system though should be placing a bet now. Here we go, Goldman. And you can see it's taken AJ as we expected. And it's just trying to get it matched on it at the moment. You can also see in there, since the last race at Goldman we had uh, a couple lay bets at Heelsville, and they were both winners. So we've got uh, uh, matched on AJ at a price of $12, so we'd like number seven to not win this race. Don't think we've had too much luck with number seven so far, so let's see how we go. They're out of the boxes. Able to clear the ruck, but she's skinny for mine at the 340. And 11's late AJ number seven back into 850. So getting quite dark and gloomy to the uh, southeast of Lilac City as the lure rolls. First leg of the main quad, favourite with the red jacket. They're set, ready, racing. 
Began beautifully off the inside, Bogan Valley, straight two from Skedaddle Addy, AJ to four, Crack and Scar, and deeper, my mate Nate, they're followed by Solo Traveller. Out the back was Snowy's Lad with Cole Barber, they spin the carousel, and it's Bogan Valley in front, Skedaddle Addy pushing him along, but he's just too classy for this lot. Bogan Valley from Skedaddle Addy, third home, my mate Nate, and AJ four. They were followed out deeper then by Solo Traveller, Crack and Scar, Cole Barber, Snowy's Lad, there's no more in 20. And 10. So Bogan Valley wins the open to the quaddy at Goulburn and pays top of the totes 250 super tab. It's 1, 8 and 6. So 1, 8, 6, 7. So the one that we didn't want to win ran fourth, which is perfect. So we have a winner on that one. So there we go. We've got a third favourite that's uh, done exactly what we wanted it to do. And that uh, odds on first favourite, well, that's no surprise. So we gained $3.20 there. Which is, uh, which is excellent. Um, if we have a look, we can see you know, that, that favourite was sitting at $1.64 at the jump. So, yeah, seriously odds on. And, and those huge escalations that would be required to, to take that on stop at a winner just are not worth the risk. Whereas the, the lay pro system is, is pretty gentle in its staking. You can see, you can see it, it all stays within that range. So it's, um, you know, it's had a bit of a rough morning, as you can see. But um, you know, it tends to recover quite nicely over time. You know, we were out there at uh, overall 156 down. We're, we're already at 141, so we've already gained $14 there, and just $15 even in a, in a pretty short space of time. So it's just a matter of patience in letting it run. So race five was good. I think we might stick around for uh, for one more race if the weather doesn't beat us, and uh, see how we go. Okay, well there you go. The weather just hit us and that is, uh, that's the wind blowing the dust around. So, um, we're uh, about 10 minutes from the next race and uh, you can just see it's, it's, it's everywhere. And that looks like there's plenty of rain out there as well. And the wind is just, um, I think I might, wow, it's just getting cold too. <laughs> really cold really quickly I think I might um, head inside so we're two minutes away from the advertised start time of the next race it's raining it's raining quite a bit um, the wind has eased a little and the dogs are heading out so a little bit of thunder about but it looks like we are going to get this race so let's have a look at the market we're uh, a minute 30 out clear favorite ruling monarch number three dollar 32 obviously odds on not doing that one uh second favorite at 11.50 third favorite at 12 dollars number four finally chasing so we'll probably be on that one laying that one uh next we've got 18 dollars i can't see that coming in to our range before the uh, in the next 35 seconds so probably we're looking at just number four finally chasing as a lay bet if we go back to the bots which um, running at home have remote access from here which is particularly helpful oh hear the thunder uh, we're at uh, 15 seconds away from the point where it should pick up a, uh, a runner and uh, and decide that that's the one it's going to bet on. So we'll see what we get. So here we go. Just no, there we go. So it's got something in gold, and it's got, as we expected, number four finally chasing. Just waiting to get uh, matched on that. And there we go, matched at $12, a stake there of. Makes sense. The last one that uh, in the last race, AJ was a stake of 320, so this one's 310, as per the staking system that we uh, saw earlier on. So you can see, finally chasing wins. It's a loss of 34.10 for us, but it loses. We make three dollars ten. So number four, finally chasing, is our runner 
to not win the race and they are at the boxes with the wind and the rain and everything so let's see how they go as Merck joins us from the National Racing Service this is the sixth from Goulburn on a 10 race card very doomy and gloomy towards the south as the lure rolls they're running into a head breeze here as they turn they're set ready Racing, Skedaddle Zoe slow out with Rich Man's World and Master Artist Adamville won the hop early from Ruling Monarch who quickly went to second and took over. Up to third instant bullet there followed Skedaddle Zoe finally chasing Master Artist and Rich Man's World but around the corner comes Ruling Monarch. He's well clear and he's going to bolt in. Ruling Monarch from Skedaddle Zoe. Well third's close. Maybe Master Artist in front of Rich Man's World then instant bullet further back to finally chasing and Adamville was one of the last in 20 and 4. Good win to Ruling Monarch, who's paid sensational there on the New South Wales Tate at 2.20 for $1.25, shot on the fixed. Skedaddle Zoe will get second, and it's just a matter of whether the, the yellow is hung on or master artist. In fact, here we go, 3175, interim result. 3175, so number four. Not even in the top four, which is just the way we like it with this system. Um, again, clear favourite. The winner was a dollar forty when it jumped, ruling Monarch, but finally chasing not in the top four, uh, so that's perfectly fine for us. Uh, and you can see we made that three dollars ten there. Um, there's been some bets at Hill, at uh, Hillsville and Murray Bridge. You can see here. No winners today. That's Mandura last night was the last winner there. Um, no winners on the stop at a winner system yet with uh, six races in a row that are losses. But, you know, it's still fairly small staking. It's dollar sixty-eight. You can see the previous series, one, two, three, four, five. It won on the sixth race at a stake of 86 cents. So. Staking is a little bit bigger today, but not by much. And you can see it, it only needs a win every now and then to to to, to make its profit because that's all it all it really needs. As for this system, well, it's doing its job. The the, as the more wins it has, the better. And uh, the more wins it has, the lower the staking will be, uh, which, which is also a good thing in some ways. That race then was a Group 5 race, so it wasn't a maiden, which uh, probably helps a little bit in determining, in de helping people to determine the market. So you probably do get uh, better results when you're not looking at maidens. So again, maybe, maybe turn off the maidens. So the weather is rather interesting and I have to ride home. <laughs> um, won't be riding home just yet. I think I might have some lunch and see how it goes. That that rain band looks like it, it probably will pass through, so the storm will go and then I'll be able to go home. So I think I'll go and have some lunch and watch some more races while I'm here and then uh, find a suitable time to head home. Well, I managed to beat the rain back for the most part. It was actually sunny by the time I got to Canberra, which is uh, funny considering the rain was heavier in Canberra than it was in Goulburn to begin with and actually delayed the start of the Canberra thoroughbred races. But nonetheless, sunny, so that was all good for the ride home. Uh, because I did rush home, I actually missed uh, seeing the end of the meeting in Goulburn um, and there were a few more bets placed there. So uh, race seven, uh, we had a back bet on number one, Wally Wombat. Uh, a lay bet on number two, Joe McFly, and a lay bet on number six, Watchmaker. Uh, now, Joe McFly won that race, so one bet out of those three was good. Uh, for the race eight, we had a lay bet on number three, Computer Model, and a lay on Miss Macy Lynn. Neither of those won the race, so good result there. No bets on race nine or race ten. And that does start to show the patience that you require with a system like this at times. Uh, you get some really good days, some difficult days, some middle of the pack days. Um, if we look at uh, this system in particular, Thursday 
uh, it, as you can see on the graph here, it was in profit to start with, had a few losses, broke even for the day. Friday, as we saw at Goulburn, started pretty roughly. In fact, it's uh, Sunday as I'm filming this, but Friday um, started off pretty roughly, then came back pretty well, roughly a break even day. Saturday started well, rough middle of the day, came good towards the end and was in a slight profit towards the end. Now, that's kind of the pattern that I tend to see with this. Uh, if I look at a previous five day period, that had some ups and downs and some pretty big ups and downs as well, but turned into a profit of about $130 over those five days. Now that's roughly where I'm seeing this system. Uh, if you're doing 50 cent stakes, somewhere around $100, $200 per week seems to be about right for it. But you know, I'm always looking at the results of these, analyzing that, seeing what could be changed to make it better. Um, so certainly as this continues, I'll, I'll progress further. Now, I did have a look at the Maidens, as I mentioned. At some of the other meetings, Maidens were doing really well. So you know, pulling them out is probably not a great way to, to run the system, but there'll be other things that I'll look at. And I've already revised, um, before we got there on Goulburn, I'd revised the uh, third favourites odd range and in fact the fourth favourites as well. Um, so always revising and I've got a few other systems on the go that I may do a video about at some stage. Now links to the software used in this video, links to the strategy, I'm using some details of that on my blog all in the description below and if you'd like to send me some comments on how you might adjust the system or what you might be doing with the system or if you've, you've decided to have a look at the software and you come up with a system of your own that you think's worth looking at, well, I'd be interested to see that as well. So uh, that's what I'm doing for the moment. And as I say, I'm, I'm doing more and always adjusting. So whatever you do, good luck on the punt. <music>